Hello, my friends! Before we get into this video, I just want to thank y'all for the incredible response to my previous video, Butch Hartman and Character Design. I did not at all expect it to blow up like it did. It's been incredibly exciting and humbling to see your responses, as well as to laugh at your jokes in the comments. In my effort to use this channel more often, um, and due to several requests in the comments of the Butch Hartman video, I'm going to attempt to start making videos covering different art topics with some amount of regularity. I got a lot of requests specifically for a larger scale, more in-depth character design video or series, and that is something I'm working on, but it's requiring quite a bit of prep and work on my part, so it'll probably still be a bit of time before that sees the light of day. In the meantime, I'll be putting out other slightly easier to prep videos like this one. So, with all of that being said, I thought I'd start by tackling something of a popular topic in recent years, and that is developing your own art style. Quick note, but I'll be using the general you throughout this video for ease of use and understanding. Not all of these points may apply to you specifically, and that's okay. Hopefully you'll still get something out of it. Let's begin with a thought exercise. Why do you want a distinct art style? I think, and I very well might be wrong here, but my assumption is that in the age of the internet, especially right now when we have so many very popular social medias to choose where to platform our art, many artists believe on some level, perhaps even subconsciously, that they need to have a distinct, exciting, and original style to stand out among thousands of other artists. And there's obviously nothing wrong with wanting to stand out. We're artists. <laughs> our livelihoods, or at least our inner corvid brain which seeks validation, literally depends on standing out. Plus, stylizing can be fun. It's fun to experiment and play around with different styles and see what you vibe with and enjoy doing. But there is something wrong with putting style over substance. Yes, I am going to give you subversive advice in a video about developing your own art style, and no, I will not apologize. We'll get to the fun stuff later, I promise, but this is important. Bear with me. Let's talk about the fundamentals. Exciting game. Take a shot of water every time I say the fundamentals. That's two so far. What I mean when I say the fundamentals is, in this case, the principles of design, emphasis, balance and alignment, contrast, repetition, proportion, movement, and white slash negative space, anatomy, and color theory. Perspective as well if you want to draw buildings and environments. It is so, so, so incredibly important to have a good grasp of the fundamentals as the foundation of your style. I know it's not nearly as fun as playing with stylization, but it will improve your art, and by extension any stylization you do add, so much more than if you disregard them. The fundamentals are fundamental for a very good reason, and I implore you to practice them. And when I say this, I don't mean that you have to, like, become a master in anatomy to the point where you can name every muscle in the body. Lord knows I can't. <laughs> or that you have to completely give up your own art style and only draw realism. You absolutely can, and should, in my opinion, experiment with style at the same time. But even having a passing knowledge of how the body works, how color works, how to effectively use the principles of design, can and will drastically improve your art and your ability to effectively stylize your art in a way that makes sense and looks good. Learning, understanding, and internalizing the fundamentals will literally only make you stronger. There is no downside at all. It might be tempting to say, but my style is exciting and eye-catching and unique, and that's all that matters. But at least in a professional setting where you need to submit a portfolio, that's not going to fly at all. <laughs> I've seen many artists who have very distinct styles, even fairly exciting ones, whose portfolios I would theoretically throw out because their grasp of the fundamentals is obviously inadequate, which signals, in my mind, that they've put style over substance and or are lacking vital experience both of which would be problems in a hypothetical professional field like concept art or animation, for instance. You even see this in artists who are considered masters. 
Picasso is known for his abstraction, but his earlier work was not nearly as abstract, and shows that he put work into learning the fundamentals before he got into his signature style. Dali, too, despite his signature surrealism, had a very strong grasp of the fundamentals, as shown here in his painting Crucifixion Corpus Hypercubus, which, side note, is one of my favorite paintings of all time, so I had to shoehorn it in here. This is true for many, many artists who were considered masters. And even within our modern internet age, it's still very relevant. I'll use one of my favorite artists, Dershing Helmer, as an example. The main protagonist of her webcomic, Mare Internum, which you should read, is obviously quite exaggerated and stylized. He has a big nose, a weird brow bone, no eyebrows, kind of a lumpy mouth. Dershing also does these very squared off fingers, which I love the look of. And some of the proportions are a bit exaggerated, like wrists and ankles being somewhat thin, which again, I love the look of. But you can still see her intimate knowledge of anatomy throughout every drawing she does. Like, look at this freaking cover. The muscles and foreshortening are just so gorgeous. Mwah! And this is obvious in like every single drawing Dershing makes. Her deep understanding of the fundamentals shows in every stroke she puts down, and it makes her art so incredibly visually strong, compelling, and beautiful. I literally cannot overstate how important it is to have a good grasp on the fundamentals. Know the rules before you break them is a cliché, but it's a cliché because it's true. It will make an incredible difference in your art. Okay, I'm done preaching at you. I did promise to get to the fun stuff at some point, so let's actually do that. Also, that was 12 times that I said the fundamentals. Are you feeling hydrated? Organic stylization. In my mind, there are two main ways of stylization. Letting your style grow organically, or purposefully changing things about your art with a specific look in mind. These two methods are not mutually exclusive, and in fact, I've found often happen simultaneously over time. The first method, letting your style grow organically, will happen to any artist as they grow, improve, and change. Our styles are melting pots of our influences. Whether you realize it or not, you do have a style, even if you aren't actively trying. I've seen quite a few artists say that they don't have a style of their own, and I'm always puzzled because you can't not have a style. Having an art style of some kind is just inherent to being an artist. Even if your style isn't something extremely cartoony, anime, illustrative, painterly, etc., and is just somewhat neutral, something I consider mine to be, by the way, you still have a style. It's always amusing to look at artists who will post a piece and say they are trying a new style, and it's still very recognizably their style, even with the changes they've implemented. This is, in my experience, almost universally the case. Even while consciously changing your style, your art will almost certainly be recognizable as yours. Think of the noticeable differences in shows like Steven Universe, depending on who storyboarded each episode. The style is still the shows, but we can see the artist's individual style peeking through as well. Our artistic influences shape us. We, many times unconsciously, take in bits and pieces of the styles and artists we like. They get whisked together in our brains with all the other styles and artists we like, along with our own artistic views, sensibilities, skills, and other individual touches. And what pops out the other end is an art style. It is entirely unique. It is entirely yours. You have a style. The second method of developing an art style is through purposefully changing aspects of your art with a specific goal in mind. Do you want your art to look more realistic, more cartoony, more colorful? Do you want bolder line work, or no line work at all, or any number of different options? Well then, make it happen! Alright, that's it, thanks for watching! Just kidding. Purposeful stylization. When choosing to consciously change your style, it might be useful to think about why you are changing your style. Not in any sort of judgmental way, but just in an introspective, explorative way. Here are some questions that I've thought up to mull over. On a purely aesthetic level, what speaks to you? What are you attempting to say with your arts, if anything? 
What do you want to achieve, both artistically on your end and on the viewer's end? What do you want others to notice about your art, first and foremost? Is there anything you dislike about your current style? Is there anything you've seen other artists do that you've admired or wanted to imitate? What are your plans for your artistic future? As in, are you wanting to be a concept artist? And if so, would you want to design characters or environments or both? What about props or UI? Do you want to be an illustrator of children's books? An animator? A comic artist? Do you want to sell your art at cons as prints, stickers, pins, charms, and other merch? Do you want to go a more traditional route and have your art shown in physical galleries? Is art purely a hobby for you, something you don't plan on making a living off of? There are no right or wrong answers to these questions. They're purely to make you think about your art and what it means to you, and how that might affect your stylization choices. For instance, if you want to be an animator, it might behoove you to simplify your art style, as animating tons of tiny details on a character is often a painstaking, Herculean effort. Plus, a lot of animation, especially for television, has a very limited budget. If you want to make comics, it could be useful to make your characters very expressive, so you can fully take advantage of comics' sequential and storytelling nature. This might mean making a character's eyes or mouth larger, or exaggerating their expressions, and often also means that strong posing is critical. Due to comics being very illustrative, and depending on your taste, this might also mean that you can get very detailed and lush. Or swing the other way, like with animation, and simplify your style so that your workflow is very quick. Thinking back to the questions, look over a few of your pieces. Is there anything in particular you dislike about your own art style? Again, there is no wrong answer, and saying, yes, there is something I dislike, is not a bad thing. I used to really dislike how my noses looked in my paintings, so I've been actively trying to change them. It's still a work in progress. <laughs> If there is something that you see in your style that you dislike, try to pinpoint what it is. If it's just something you're not vibing with, it's easy enough to experiment. If it's a lack of knowledge on a particular subject that you think is affecting your style, such as anatomy, it's easy enough to study. If you're having trouble pinpointing what's bothering you, try flipping the canvas, reducing your art to its values, or asking friends for critique. To go back to the list of questions one more time, take a look at some of your favorite artists, or even just pieces of art that you really like. If you want, do a study and see if you can imitate their style, with the intent of being very thoughtful as you do so. Though please don't post your study online, at least not without proper credit and links to the original artist. What in particular do you like about their style? As I mentioned before, Dershing Helmer is one of my favorite artists, and I know I've absorbed elements of her style that I like. For a specific example, again, I love her somewhat fluid, slightly squared off fingers, and there's something I find myself constantly trying to emulate in my own art. Another artist that was, and still is, a huge influence in my own style is Heather Campbell, aka Makani. In particular, the way she stylizes faces and exaggerates expressions. I'll freely admit that I've consciously picked bits and pieces of what I love about her art and incorporated them into my own. So think about it. Again, not in a judgmental way. There are no right or wrong answers to simply introspecting about what your art and your style means to you and what you want to get out of it and do with it. Experiment a lot and with everything. Try new brushes, try wild colors, try crazy exaggerations. Go beyond your comfort zone with the knowledge and solace that these are all just experiments, and that they don't necessarily have to look good or even be seen by anyone. Sometimes the best method is just to throw anything and everything out there and see what sticks. Alternatively, go back to basics and study the fundamentals and get out of your own head for a bit. Ultimately, developing your art style should be an enjoyable process. Despite my list of questions, I think developing your style is largely intuitive, and will come naturally as you grow as an artist, and trying to force something into existence is only going to burn you out and make you tired and frustrated. Let it be fun and natural and instinctual. Trust in yourself.
Like I said before, your style is a melting pot of much of what you take in, and it will evolve over time. Your skills grow, your influences change, your artistic worldview shifts. Your art style, in some capacity, is a reflection of who you are as a person right now, and that's pretty cool. It's a little bit hard to talk about this subject without just making it all about me and how my style has changed. So I tried to think about how those changes actually came about over the years and tried to break things down to be more broadly applicable and helpful. Hopefully I achieved that and you got at least something out of it. Thank you again for the response to my last video, and if there's any art topic in particular you'd like to see me talk about, please let me know in the comments. I do have some ideas for future videos, in particular the character design video that was requested, but I'd love more ideas. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. I'll see you next time.